my name is Everett. This evening we are reading Polar Bears Past Bedtime by Mary Pope Osborne, Magic Tree House Series, book number 12. Chapter 1, Seriously? Who? The strange sound came from outside the open window. Jack opened his eyes in the dark. He, the sound came again. Who? Jack sat up and turned on his light. He put on his glasses and grabbed a flashlight from the, his table and shone it out the window. A white snowy owl was sitting on the tree branch. Who? The owl said again. It's large yellow eyes looked right into Jack. What did you want? Jack wondered. Is he a sign like the rabbit in the gazelle? The a long-legged rabbit and a gazelle had led Jack and Nanny to the magic treehouse for their last two adventures. Who? Wait a second, Jack said to the owl. I'll get Annie. Annie, Jack's sister Annie, always seemed to know what birds and animals were saying. Jack jumped out of bed and hurried to the to any room. She was sound asleep. Jack took her and she stirred. What? she said. Come in my room, Jack whispered. I think Morgan sent a sign. A, in a slip second, in a slip second, Annie was out of bed and she hurried with Jack to his room. Jack led her to the window. The snowy owl was still there. Who said the owl. Then he raised his white wings and took off into the night. He wants us to go to the woods, said Annie. That's what I thought, said Jack. Meet you downstairs after we get dressed. No, he says go now, right now, said Annie. We'll have to wear our pajamas. I have to put on my sneakers, said Jack. Okay, I'll meet you downstairs, said Annie. And I have to put mine on too, on too, said Annie. She pulled on his, Jack pulled on the sneakers. He threw his notebook into his backpack. Then he grabbed his flashlight and tiptoed downstairs. Annie was waiting at the front door. They silently slipped outside together. The night air was warm. Moths danced around the porch light. I, I feel weird, said Jack. I'm going back to put on my clothes. You can't, said Annie. The owl says, right now. She jumped off the porch and headed across the yard. Jack groaned. How did Annie know exactly what owls said, he wondered. Still, he didn't want to be left behind, so he took off after her. The moon lit their way as they ran down the street. When they entered the Frog Creek Woods, Jack turned on his flashlight. The beam of light showed shadows and swaying branches. Jack and Annie stepped between the trees. They stayed close together. Who? Jack jumped in fear. It's just the owl, said Annie. He's somewhere nearby. The woods are creepy, said Jack. Yeah, said Annie. In the dark, it doesn't even feel like our woods. Suddenly, the owl flapped near them. Yikes, said Annie. Jack shone the flashlight on the white bird as it rose into the sky. The owl landed on a tree branch right outside the magic tree house. And there was Morgan Le Fay, the enchantress librarian. Her long white hair gleamed in the beam of Jack's flashlight. Hello, Morgan, called softly in the soothing voice. Climb out. Jack used his flashlight to find the rope ladder. Then he and Annie climbed up into the treehouse. Morgan was holding the, the three schools, each one held the answer to an ancient riddle that Jack and Annie had already solved. What? You have journeyed to the ocean, the Wild West, and the Africa to find the answers to the, these riddles, said Morgan, ready to 
for another journey? Yes, said Jack and Annie together. Morgan pulled a fourth scroll from the folds of her robe. She handed it to Annie. After we solve this riddle, will we become master librarians, asked Annie, and help you gather books through time and space, said Jack. Almost, said Morgan. Before Jack could ask what she meant, Morgan pulled out a book and gave it to the, him. For your research, she said. Jack and Annie looked at the title, the book's title, and Adventure in the Arctic. Oh, wow, said Annie. The Arctic? The Arctic, said Jack. He turned to Morgan. Are you serious? Indeed I am, she said. And you must hurry. I wish we could go there, said Annie, pointing to the cover of the book. Wait, wait, said Jack. We'll freeze to death, said, said Jack. Fear not, said Morgan. I am sending someone to meet you. The wind started to blow. Yeah. Meet us. Who? said Jack. Who? said the owl. Before Morgan could answer, the chaos started to spin. It spun faster and faster, and everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 2 The Howling. The air was crisp and cold. Jack and Annie shivered. They looked out the window at a dark gray sky. The chaos was on the ground. There were no trees and no houses, only an endless field of ice and snow. Morgan and the owl were gone. R r read the riddle, Annie said, her teeth chattering. Jack unrolled the scroll he read. I cover what's real and hide what's true, but something I bring out, the courage in you. What am I? I'd better write it down, said Jack shivering he pulled out his notebook and copied the riddle then he opened the book he found a picture of a barren white field he read aloud the arctic tundra is a treeless plain during a dark winter it was covered with snow and ice in early spring snow falls but the sky begins to light to get lighter during the Summer season, the snow and ice melt and the sun shines 24 hours a day. It must be spring now, said Jack. There, There's snow, but the sky is a little white. He turned the page. There was a picture of a man wearing a hooded coat with fur trim. Look at this guy, said Jack. He showed Annie the picture. We need his coat, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack. Listen to this. He read aloud. The seal hunter wears seal skin clothes to protect their from the icy winds. Before modern time, na native people of the American lived by hunting seals, caribou, polar bear, and whales. Jack took out his notebook. He wrote, The Arctic. Seal hunter wore seal skin. He was too cold to write anymore. He clutched his pack against his chest and blew on his fingers. He wished he were back home in bed. Morgan said someone was coming to meet us, said Annie. If they don't come soon, we'll freeze to death, said Jack. It's getting darker and colder. Shh, listen, said Annie. A howling sound came from the distance. Then more howling sounds and more. What's that, said Jack. They looked out the window. Snow was falling now. It was hard to see. It. The howling grew louder. It was mixed with yipping and yelping noises. Jack and Annie saw dark shapes coming through the snow. They seemed to be running toward the trails. Wolves, said Annie. Great. That's all we need, said Jack. We're freezing and now a pack of wolves is coming for us. Jack pulled Annie into the corner of the treehouse. They huddled close. The howling got louder and louder. It sounded as if the wolves were circling the treehouse. The whining and yipping. Jack couldn't stand 
out it any longer. He grabbed Arctic book. Maybe this can help us, he said. He searched for a picture of wolves. Oh, hi, said Danny. Jack looked up. He caught his breath. A man was looking through the treehouse window. His face was surrounded by fur. It was the seal hunter from the Arctic book. Chapter 3, Mush. Did you come with the wolves? Asked Danny. The seal, her, the seal hunter looked puzzled. Did Morgan send you to us? Said Jack. I had a dream, said the man. You were in it. You needed help. Danny smiled. Morgan sends dreams sometimes, she said. We came in Morgan's magic treehouse. It flies through time. Oh, brother, thought Jack. Who will believe that? The seal hunter smiled as if he were was not, uh, were not as surprised at all. We do need help, said Jack. We're, we're, we, we're, we're fr- fr- freezing. The seal hunter nodded. Then he left the window. They, he returned a moment later with two small parkas like his own. They were made from heavy dark skins with fur-trimmed hoods. He passed one to Jack and, a- and one to Annie. Thanks, said Jack and Annie. They put the parkas on. Hooray, said Annie. It's warm. Yeah, said Jack. We're made of seal skin. Poor seals, said Annie. Don't think about it, said Jack. He pulled his hood up. He, his head was and upper body were very snug now. Only his legs, hands, and feet were still freezing. Oh, thanks, said Annie. Jack looked up. The seal hunter was giving a pair of, of fur pants to Annie. Then he handed a pair to Jack. Thanks, he said. He quickly pulled his, the pants over his pajamas. Next, the seal hunter gave each of them a pair of fur boots and mittens. Jack took off his sneakers and pulled on the boots. He wiggled his frozen fingers and to hit the warm mittens. I have a quick question, said Jack to the seal hunter. Do you know the answer to this riddle? He opened the book and read. I cover what's real and hide what's true, but something I bring out the courage in me. What am I? The seal hunter shook his head. Come, he said to Jack and Annie. Then he disappeared from the window. What about the wolves out there? Jack called, but the seal hunter didn't answer. Annie grabbed Jack grabbed the Arctic book and looked for a picture of the seal hunter. When Jack found the picture, he smiled. The seal hunter was standing beside a dog, so Jack read. In cold weather, the seal hunter travels by dog sled. Zebrin huskins often howl like wolves. A lead dog controls the others. The sled runs are sometimes made of frozen fish or rolled up in seal skin. Hey, Annie, they're not wolves, Jack said. There, he looked up. Annie was gone. Jack threw the book and notebook into his pack, but he was, but he was so fat in his furry clothes that his pack wouldn't fit. Jack loosened the shoulder straps and tried to put the back pack on again. It fit. Jack looked at the small window. would be a tight fit too. He went on his he he went out head first and barely squeezed through the window. Jack fell onto the snowy ground. The snow was still drifting down. The air was misty white. Jack heard barking and howling. He moved carefully toward the noise. At first he couldn't see the dog sled, but when he got closer he counted to nine Siberian Huskies. They had thick fur, big heads, and pointy ears. The lead dog barked at him. He stopped. He's telling you to climb on, said Annie. She was standing on the back of the dog sled with the seal hunter next to her in the snow. Jack jumped onto the sled to Annie. The seal hunter cracked a whip. Mush, he shouted. The Huskies dashed off in a swirl swirl of snow about them 
flew the snowy owl. Chapter 4, Snow House. The dog sled skimmed silently over the fo frozen tundra. The seal hunter ran alongside it. Sometimes he cracked his whip against the ice. The snow drifts looked like giant white sculptures as the sun slipped behind the frozen hills. Then a full orange moon rose in the sky. The moonlight lit a small rounded igloo in front of them. The dog slowed then stopped. Jack stepped off the sled. Annie went to help unhitch the dogs. Jack took his book out of his pack and read about igloos. The word igloo means house in the language of Native American people. The house is built with blocks of snow. Dry snow is good all material because material because it keeps it in the heat. The temperature inside an igloo can be 65 degrees warmer than the temperature outside. Jack took his notebook. He pulled off his mittens just enough time to write. Igloo means house. Come on, Jack, said Annie. She and the seal hunter were waiting for him in front of the igloo. The dogs were leashed together inside, outside. Jack hurried to join them. The hunter pushed aside animal skins covering the entrance. They stepped inside. A fat candle burned brightly. Shadows danced on the walls of ice and snow. Jack and Nanny sat on a fur-covered platform. They watched the seal hunter move about. First, he lit a small stove. Then he slipped outside, then came back with a snowball and chunks of frozen meat. He pulled the snowball on the pot over the stove. Then he added the meat. What you making? asked Danny. Jack pulled out his book and found a picture of the hunter cooking. He and Annie read the words silently. There was a time when nearly all of the Arctic people, food and clothes and tools came from Arctic animals, especially the seal. Nearly every part of the seal could be eaten. Lamps were fueled with seal fat, clothes were made from seal skin, and knives and needles were carved from seal bones. He must be boiling, boiling seal meat, said Jack. The poor seals, said Annie. The seal hunter looked up. They are not poor, he said. They help us because they know we would die without them. Oh, said Annie. In return, we always thank the animal spirit, said the seal hunter. How do you do that, said Jack. We have many special ceremonies, said the hunter. He reached under the fur-covered platform and took out two wooden masks. Soon there will be a ceremony of honoring the spirits of the polar bear, he said. The carved mask these for the same ceremony. Polar bears, said Annie. Yes, the seal hunter said. Just as the seal has given us m many gifts, as so has the polar bear. Like what, said Jack? Long ago, the polar bear taught us how to live in the ice and snow, said the seal hunter. Taught you, said Jack? I mean, can you give us some facts, the seal hunter smiled. Yes, he said. A polar bear catches a seal when the seal comes up to breathe through a hole in the ice. The oldest seal hunter watched the polar bear and learned. This is how my father taught me to seal hunt. As his father taught him. That's a good fact, said Jack. 
the very first of my people learned to make igloos from polar bears, said the seal hunter. Polar bears built snow houses but by digging caves in the drift. Another good fact, said Jack. Sometimes the polar bear can even teach people to fly, said the seal hunter. Um, that's an amazing fact, said Amy. Jack smiled. The rest sounded like true facts, he said. But I know that's pretend. The seal hunter just laughed, then turned back to his cooking. That's why That's why he wasn't surprised to hear about the trios, Jack thought. If he believed polar bears could fly, he probably would believe anything. The seal hunter lifted the chunk of boiling meat out of the pot. He dropped them onto a wooden bucket and gave it to Annie. Let's feed the dogs, he said. Oh boy, said Annie. She followed the hunter outside, swinging the bucket. Jack quickly threw his notebook and pencil and dark stripper. He started to follow them. Then his gaze fell on the two bear mice. He picked them up to get a better look. Each was carved in the shape of a polar bear's face with a bow and nose and roundish ears. There were two holes for eyes and a strap to hold it on your head. Suddenly, howls split the air. The dogs were barking and growling. Annie squealed. The dog, are the dogs attacking her? Jack wondered. Annie, still holding the bear mask. Jack charged out of the igloo. Chapter 5. You're it! The dogs were barking wildly at two small creatures playing in the moonlight. Polar bears! cried Annie. One roly poly cub leaped onto the other. They both rolled through the snow. Hi, little bears, Annie called. The cubs jumped up and shook themselves like wet puppies. Then they scrambled toward Annie, who rushed to greet them. Hi, 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 she called. Wait, Jack shouted. Where's the mother? He looked around for the mother bear, but she wasn't nowhere in sight. Maybe they're orphans, he thought. Jack looked back at Annie. She was wrestling with the little bears in the snow. She laughed so hard she couldn't stand. Jack started laughing too. He carefully put the polar bear mask in his pack. Then he ran to join Annie. She was running with the cubs across the snowy tundra. One of them raced to her, tagged her, then ran, raced away. Annie ran after the bear and tagged him back. You're it, she said. Jack and the other cub joined in. Soon Jack and Annie and the two cubs were all chasing each other over the moonlit snow. They ran until the cubs fell down ahead of them. The cubs lay perfectly still panting. Jack and Annie stared at them. Are you hurt? Annie wondered aloud. Jack and Annie ran to the cubs. Then just as they leaned down to see if they were all right, the cubs jumped up. They pushed Jack and Annie over and scrambled away. They were pretending, said Jack laughing. Jack and Annie charged after the cubs. They ran over the white tundra until they came to a frozen sea. Jack looked around. Pretty far from the igloo. I don't hear the huskies anymore, he said. Maybe we should go back. Wait a minute, said Annie. Look, the bears are scooting up a snow lake. They were on their back sliding down the bank onto the icy covered sea. Jack and Annie laughed. It's like sledding, she said. Let's try it. Okay, said Jack, but we have to go back. Jack followed Annie up the snowbank. He clutched his pack in his arms and lay on any land or back. She whooped as she slid down the ice. Jack followed her. Watch out! Below, he shouted, the little bears were sitting at the bottom of the snowbank. One gently 
whack Jack and in Jack in the face with her furry paw. Then she lay down. I'm tired too, said Annie. Yes, said Jack. Let's rest for just a minute. Jack and Annie looked up at the orange moon as they lay beside the cubs. All they could hear was the wind and soft breathing of the cubs. That was fun, said Annie. Yeah, it was, said Jack. But we'd better head back to the igloo. The seal hunter probably is looking for us. Plus, we have to solve the riddle. Jack rolled onto his side and tried to stand. Crack! Oh no, he said. He went back down onto his knees. I think we're on ice. What do you mean? said Annie. She started to stand. Another crack rang out. Oh no, she said. She carefully lay back down. The polar bears come moved closer to Jack and Annie. They they made little crying sounds. Jack wanted to cry too, but he took a deep breath. Let's see let's see what our book says, he said. He reached for the Yarka book in his pack. He took the masks out first and handed one to Annie. I took these from the igloo by mistake, he said. As he started to reach for the Arctic book, he heard the loudest crack of all. Crack! We're not even moving and the ice is cracking, said Annie. Just then there was another new sound, a low stork sound. It came from the top of the snowbank about 50 feet away. Jack looked up. Staring down at them was a giant polar bear, the polar bear mother, whispered Annie. Chapter 6, Flying Bears. The cubs wimp louder. They want to go to her, but they're afraid of the ice, whispered Jack. Annie petted the cubs. Don't be afraid, she told them. You'll get back to your mother. The big polar bear growled. She paced back and forth, sniffing there. Annie kept panting, patting the cubs and whispering to them. Jack looked at the book for anything that might help. Finally, he found something. Even though a female polar bear can weigh up to 700 pounds, she can walk on ice too thin to hold a person by balancing her weight and sliding her paws over the ice. Oh man, that's incredible, whispered Jack. He watched the mother polar bear walk down the snowbank. Oh, on large, silent feet, he, she crept about at the edge of the frozen sea. She tried to step onto the ice, but each time she did, it cracked, and she had to retreat. At last, she found a firm spot. Then the polar bear stretched out all four of her legs and lay on the ice. Slowly, she moved forward, pushing herself with her claws. Is she coming to get her babies, said Jack, or is she coming to get us? I don't know, said Annie. Hey, let's put on the mask. For what, said Jack? Maybe they'll protect us, said Annie. Maybe she'll think we're polar bears too, oh brother, said Jack. But Annie gave him a bear mask. He took off his glasses and slipped it on. Jack peered through the mask holes. It was hard to see the huge white bear sliding over the frozen sea. He squinted that out. The polar bear looked at her cubs and let out a deep moan. The two little bears went on their mother. She licked the cubs and touched her nose against each of theirs. Then they crawled onto her back. They're safe now, said Jack. Even if the mother breaks through the ice, she can swim with them to shore. Yeah, I just wish she won't leave us behind, said Annie. The mother bear slowly turned her body around. Then she pushed off with her hind legs. With her cubs on her back, she began sliding away. Let's try moving like her, said Annie. But the ice could break and we could freeze to death, said Jack. If we just stay here, we'll freeze too, said Annie. Remember, the seal hunter said his people learned from polar bears. Jack took a deep breath. Okay. He said, let's try it. He lay on his stomach. He spread his arms and legs. Then he copied the bears. He pressed his mittens against the ice and pushed off, sliding his feet. Amazingly, there was no cracking sound. 
Grrr, he growled, and he pushed off again. And Jack heard Danny sliding behind him. He kept going. She, he pushed and slid. He pushed again and slid again. He moved the movement over and over until something happened. He didn't feel like a boy anymore. He felt like a polar bear. Then Jack felt something even stranger. He felt like flying. Polar bear flying. Jack swirled along as if his arms and legs were giant wings. The moonlit ice were a grassy sky. Glassy sky. He remembered what the seal hunter had said. Polar bears can fly. Chapter 7. Spirit Light. Jack, you can get up now, said Annie. Jack opened his eyes. Annie was standing over him. She still had on her mask. We're safe. We're on safe ground, she said. Jack felt as if he'd been dreaming. He looked around. They had reached the tundra at the edge of the frozen sea. The cubs were romping in the distance, but their mother was sitting nearby, gazing at Jack and Annie. She waited to make sure we were safe, said Annie. She stared at the polar bear in awe. The word of the seal hunter came back to him. Always thank the animal spirit. We should thank the polar bear spirit now, said Jack. Of course, said Annie. Jack scrambled to his feet. Still wearing his bear mask, he stood before the polar bear and pressed his hands together. We thank you, he said, bowing. We thank you forever, said Annie, also bowing. We thank you beyond the moon and the stars, said Jack. We thank you beyond the deepest sea, said Annie. Then she threw out her arms and twirled around. Jack did the same. They both danced around in the snowy, honoring the polar bear. Finally, they stopped and bowed one last time. When they looked up, the polar bear had rose up on her legs. She was twice as tall as Jack. She lowered her huge head as if she were bowing back to them. At the moment, the sky exploded with night. The night became a giant swirl of red, green, green, and purple lights. It looked like a genie coming out of a magic lamp. Jack's sight took his Jack's breath away. The sight took Jack's be- breath away. He stared in wonder as the dazzling lights lit the tundra. As is it the polar bear spirit? Annie asked in a hushed voice. As far as Jack could see, the sky and snow shimmered. Even the bear's fur shimmered in the strange light. No, it's not a spirit, said Jack. There's got to be a scientific reason. I'll find out. Shaking, he reached into his backpack and pulled out the Arctic book. He took off his bear mask and put on his glasses. By the greenish glow, Jack found a picture of the skylight. The picture didn't come close to the real thing. He read aloud, One of the most amazing sights in the Arctic is the northern lights. The swirl of light is caused by electrical charged by particles from the sun streaking atoms and molecules in the Earth's atmosphere. See, there is a scientific reason, said Jack. It's not the spirit. Then suddenly, all the distant lights were gone, as if someone had blown out the candle. The magic had ended. Chapter 8, Riddle Solved. Now only the moon shone on the snow. Jack looked around for the polar bears. She was gone. Where'd she go? And Stanley. I don't know, said Jack. He looked over the tundra. There was no sign of the giant polar bear or her cubs. Maybe she's not interested in scientific reasons, said Jack. And he sighed. She took off her bear mask and handed it to Jack. He put both of theirs in his hat. Now what? asked Annie. 
They looked round. The vast field was snow ended in darkness. Jack had no idea where they were. He shrugged. I guess we just have to walk and hope for the best. Wait, listen, said Annie. From the distance came howling sounds. They grew louder and louder. Yay, we don't have to wait long, said Annie. The huskies were coming. Howling filled the night as the dog sled came into view. The seal hunter was running beside it. We're here! Over here, called Jack. He ran toward the sled. Annie followed. I was really af- I was afraid you got lost, said the seal hunter. We were, said Annie. We got stuck on the thin ice, too. But the polar bears helped us. Yeah, said Jack. And we wore your masks, and they made us feel like polar bears. Yeah, the masks made us brave, said Annie. She caught her breath. Oh, man, wait, said Jack. Annie's words sounded familiar. He took out his notebook and read Morgan's riddle aloud. I cover what's real and hide what's true, but sometimes I bring out the courage in you. What am I? A mask, Jack and Annie said together. The seal hunter smiled. You knew it, said Annie. It wasn't for me to discover, said the seal hunter. Not me. Jack pulled the bear mask out of his backpack. Here, he said, thanks a lot. The seal hunter took the mask and put them inside his parka. We can go home, said Jack. Do you mind taking us back to the treehouse, said Annie? The seal hunter shook his head. Climb in, he said. Jack and Annie climbed onto the dog sled. Mush, the seal hunter shouted. Mush, said Annie. Mush, said Jack. Snow began to fall as they took off across the icy snow. Chapter 9. Oh no, one more. By the time the dog sled arrived at the treehouse, the snowstorm had become a blizzard. Can you wait just a minute? Jack asked the seal hunter so we can check something. The seal hunter nodded. His dogs whined as Jack and Annie climbed through the treehouse window. Jack grabbed the scroll and held the riddle. He unrolled it. The riddle was gone. In its place was a shimmering word, mask. We did it, said Annie. The treehouse will take us home now. Great, said Jack. Let's say goodbye to the seal hunter and give him back his clothes. They quickly pulled off their seal skin clothes and their boots. Thank you for letting us borrow these, Jacks called through the window. The seal hunter walked to the treehouse and took their clothes from Jack and Annie. They stood shivering in their pajamas and bare feet. Th- 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 thanks for everything, said Annie, her teeth chattering. The seal hunter gave them away. Then he walked through the swirling snow to his sled. Mush, he shouted. The dogs took off through the stormy night. Let's get out of here, said Jack. He hugged himself before we freeze to death. Annie grabbed the Pennsylvania book that always took them home. She pointed to the picture of the Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, she said. She waited for the chairs to start to spin. Nothing happened. Jack shivered. I wish we could go there, Annie said again. Again, nothing happened. What are we doing wrong, said Jack. We, he looked out the window around the trails. The four scrolls with the solved riddles answers were on the corner. Then he saw a fifth scroll. Where did that, the, the, that come from, he said. Jack grabbed it and unrolled it. On it were the words. Look at the letters, the first, not the rest. Discover the place that you the the best. Oh no, said Annie, another riddle. Okay, okay, let's stay calm, said Jack, shivering. Look at the letters, the first, not the rest. Okay, the first letters of the riddles are L-A-T-L-T. That doesn't make any sense, Annie Broken. Icy wind battered the treehouse. Snow blew inside. We have to hurry, said Annie. Jack was freezing. He looked around wildly. Letters, letters, letters. What letters, he said. 
His gaze rested on the scrolls on in the corner. M -m Maybe we should look at the letters of the answers, he said. Right, said Annie. They began unrolling the scrolls. The scroll from the adventure under the ocean said oyster. The scroll from the trip to the Wild West said echo. The scroll from the journey to the Africa said honey. The scroll from the Arctic said mask. O oyster, echo, honey, mask, said Jack. The first letters are O-E-M. O-E-H-M. That doesn't make any sense either, said Annie. Yeah, but what if we unscrambled those letters, said Jack. O-E-H-M. They looked, they could spell homo or me ho sing or home, said Jack. Home, cried Annie. That's the place we love best. Jack unrolled the fifth scroll again. The riddle was gone, and its place was one shimmering word, home. Yay, cried Annie. She grabbed the Pennsylvania book. I wish we could go home, 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 home. The trail started to spin. It went faster and faster, then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 10, Master Librarians. Warm air washed over Jack. It felt wonderful. You have succeeded in your quest, said a soft, soothing voice. Are you glad to be home? Jack opened his eyes. More than the face stood in the moonlight. Yes, said Annie. We solved your riddles, said Annie. Indeed you did, said Morgan. You have proved you can find the answers to hard questions. She reached into the folds of her robe and took out a th two thin pieces of wood. The magic library cards of for each of you, she said. She gave one to Annie and one to Jack. Oh man, said Jack. Feeling the card, the wooden card was thin and smooth like an ordinary library card. On its surface, shimmering letters, ML. These are your master librarian cards, said Morgan. The, you are the newest members of the ancient society of master librarians. What do we do with them? asked Jack. Take them on your future journeys, said Morgan. Only a very wise person or another master librarian will be able to see the, the letters. These will be the people who you could help. How, said Annie, you, can you, can we go on the mission now, right now? Now you must go home and rest, said Morgan. I will come back for you soon. Jack and Annie put their secret library cards into their pocket. Then Jack took out the Arctic book and put it with the other books. Goodbye, said Morgan. See you soon, Annie said to Morgan. Morgan gave them a little wave. Jack and Annie climbed down the rope ladder. As soon as they stepped onto the dark ground, they heard a roar. They looked up. They saw a blur of wind and light high in the oak tree. Then all was silent. Morgan and the magic trash were gone. Jack reached for his library card. When he felt it, tingly warmth, he knew that amazing adventures lay ahead. Let's go, he said. He turned on his flashlight. The woods don't feel any sh like scary anymore, said Annie as they walked through the trees. I'm not afraid anymore. Me neither, said Jack. Hey, the darkness is like the mask, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack. It hides the day, but it brings out courage. They came out of the woods. Jack saw their house in the distance. It looked warm and cozy. The porch lit, light glowed. The moon shone overhead. Home, he whispered. Home, said Annie. She started running. Jack took off after her, running to the best place that they both loved. The best. Jack's facts about the Arctic trip. In the summer, the sun never sets. In the winter, the sun never rises. Seal hunters wear seal skins. Cybran huskies pull dog sled. Igloo means house. People can learn from animals. 
Polar bears can walk on ice too thin for a person. The northern lights are a, an amazing sight. See ya. See you next time. Bye.